Hello and welcome to episode 30 of Things I've Learned from Barry Harris. Today I thought we would look at maybe some more ideas on uh, borrowing notes from the Sixth Diminished Scale. And in this instance, as a example, I thought we would use uh, A-flat-6 diminished. So A-flat-6, for those of you who don't know, is also F-7. So, in using F-7, we have to think about the diminished that surrounds that, which is the E diminished, or the G diminished, which surrounds that F-7. And that's the notes that we're going to borrow from. We're going to borrow some notes from this diminished and the notes from this diminished. Now, a nice concept that uh, I'm sure Barry has talked about, but I started looking at too, is if we take this first F minor 7 chord and the frets are, and again, these are the four middle strings. We refer to this as drop two because it's four consecutive strings. There's another reason it's really called drop two, but we'll get into that another time. But these are going to be 8th fret, 10th fret, 8th fret, 9th fret. So there's our first chord. Now the diminished above is this diminished, which is 10th fret, 11th fret, 9th fret, 11th fret. But now suppose we said for the F minor 7, we, we just want to keep that 10th fret or the C. So now we'll move all the other notes except for the C, which means we have to move the F to G. We have to move the E flat to F. And we have to move the A flat to B flat. So it would be this chord, which you kind of know it's, it happens to be a, um, a C7 from the fifth. So now we have this, we have this, now the next chord for the F minor seven, if we were going to do the true, um, if we were going to do the true inversions, would be this is a a flat six, which would be eleventh uh, fret, thirteenth fret, tenth fret, thirteenth fret. So here's our chord. So now we have this is normal. But now if we take this concept and we say, let's keep the C constant. So we're going to move the other three notes except for the C. So now here's your first chord, here's your second chord, and here is your third chord, which is really pretty. It actually turns into doubling the Cs, which is kind of nice. So now we have this. So let's say, for instance, we say, well, when do we use F minor 7? You could say, well, we use F minor 7 if it's the 2 chord of the key of E flat major. So here's F minor 7. Is the 2 chord going to B flat 7 going to E flat major? So if we look at this as a 2 chord, and then maybe we'll try to play, we'll try to find a pretty um, uh, B flat 7, which could be which could be, let's say, let's, let's do this one. Maybe we'll do this. Which could be like a B flat, but with an B minor six above it, which would be, if I were gonna call out the notes, it would be starting from the sixth string, and this would be like, kind of like a drop three, but we're adding the top note also. So it's sixth fret, skip a string, sixth fret, seventh fret, seventh fret, seventh fret. And if you want, you can add and then, you know, resolve it if you want, which is really pretty. So now we have a pretty E flat. Or you could play, which is also pretty, so also pretty. Uh, another way you could use it is, let's say, if we were playing uh, F minor 7, or A flat 6, is the first chord of all things you are. So, in this instance, the F minor 7 is not a 2 chord, but it's a 6 chord, because uh, the, the a, um, all things you are is in the key of A flat. So it starts off with it being in 
um, starting on the sixth chord. Now what's interesting about all the things you are is the chord after F minor seven is gonna be B flat minor seven, which of course Barry doesn't refer to as minor seven, but he talks about it from its six, which would be C, D flat six. So that would be A flat six or F minor seven going to D flat six or B flat minor seven. So if we took this concept, just messed around with the scale. Maybe we'll start on this one. So one, two, three, four, ah. Or maybe we'll do a little bit of it um, for, uh, what would it be for B flat? We'll say, that's the same thing. That's another way to, to do it for B flat. So then we could say maybe. But these are just two examples to show you how you can mess around with the six diminished scale to create movement within a chord change in a given song. Because a lot of times people say, oh, well, where are you going to use these? Or these are interesting to look at, but actually when you're playing a song, you know, how, how are you going to um, apply these? Well, these are two very basic ways to apply them. Um, and that's just with using one note as a constant. We could have used any note as a constant note and see what we can come up with. But see, that's not for me to do. That's for you guys to do and take a look at it and maybe discuss it and make videos of your own just to see how it comes out. Now part of the problem that I've always had is some of them are much easier to play on piano because you can move two and three fingers without worrying about the position of another finger like we have to on guitar. So what I ended up doing, whether this is right or wrong, I don't know, is just the ones that are more comfortable for me, those are the ones I use. So. But in order to find out which ones are comfortable for me, you have to just keep, you know, taking a look at all the different ones. I even like sometimes, here's the C is constant. So we did the C staying constant going up the scale, but the C, you can also go down the scale. So you could have started um, all the things you are using this chord. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry about that. Which is a really dissonant chord. Now I'm back to the regular F minor seven. So now you got watch. That's a pretty way to start all the things you are. So one, two, two. Let's see. Oh, I was too late on that, but let's see. just different ways to show you how to implement these ideas. Some of them are hard to get four notes out. That's why um, sometimes you only use two notes or, or three notes and so on. But um, these are really helpful and really important to developing your own style. And uh, again, as I was emphasizing in the last video, I really feel like it's a disservice to refer to Barry and his methodology as <clears throat> just in the brackets of the king of bebop or a bebopper or the keeper of the bebop flame. I completely understand why people say that, but uh, in a way it, um, it kind of shortens what he's really doing. Um, he, Barry is really teaching us how to improvise not only with lines like we've been going over but through chords to truly improvise with chords while you're comping for somebody or if you're playing a chord melody or whatever and that's uh, what I really feel like is uh, makes his method and his approach so brilliant 
So again, those are just two little interesting things to try to take a look at. And I hope it's helpful. So, uh, you know, I wouldn't mind seeing some people making their own videos of ideas that they have just from Barry's uh, method or even for, and it can even be small little snippets because uh, it's definitely something that I can learn from. And um, I think it also helps solidify your ideas if you, if you really say, okay, I'll have to put this on video, so, which means I really have to have it together. Together meaning in your fingers and understanding of it and being able to pull it off in a song is really important. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this lesson, episode 30 of um, just different um, six diminished ideas chording and uh, understanding how to borrow certain notes. Until next time, thanks.